some of garlic processing day. We're gonna pick out the biggest, biggest cloves. And this is gonna take a while. I did about 60 last year. We're gonna attempt to do twice as much this year. So that's a base 120 to 150. And I don't know, we'll see how many we get. So some of them only have four cloves, but they're sizable. And something like this, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but they're tiny. So I'm not bothering to plant any of that. That will be for fresh cooking. What's the last one? You no, know, these are going to keep separate so we can keep track of what's what. The majority of the ones I have are music and German red. And then I bought from a farm stand down the street a variety unknown. So that's in this mix. All right, so we're going to do the music again. I'm going to keep it in the bag and mark it out there accordingly. Oh, that one is more tiny. So it looks like it's the music to have the oops, <laughs> like four giant cloves to them. And they do still have the pinkish tint. Which I was getting confused because I didn't know, I didn't realize. I thought the music was just plain white, but they actually have that reddishness to them. And you will accidentally take some of the peeling off. That's okay. It'll survive that. So I did 40 or so bulbs and averaging five cloves per bulb. That's a lot. So as I am planting them out, I will be more selective and, well, I'll see how many holes I have in the ground, first of all, and then I'll select the best if I have too many. And I don't know, I probably have maybe 10 of each. Maybe not that one. The chestnut red had a lot of tiny ones, so might not have 10 of that, but that's a lot. So off to the next phase, which is cleaning up the planting spots. So here we have the garlic area. I gotta weed all this mess, take out the okra that were planted way too late. And then the conundrum with the peppers. I think what I've come up with is to take out two thirds, which are mainly the bell pepper and habanero and leave the jalapeno and uh, poblano at the end because they're still going strong. So leave them in for another week or until frost comes. And there's still plenty of time to put more garlic in at that point. So that is the game plan for today. Look at those nice mushrooms on that log. They almost seem edible. Well, the soil is pretty wet it's gonna pretty much stay that way and it's very tight the clay is definitely present so I'm gonna have to not bury the cloves very deep and put some loosening agents in here I got perlite I got coffee grounds although not enough and I don't know. We'll start with that, the perlite and the coffee grounds that I have. So I got a five pound bucket of sphagnum peat moss. 
my perlite and my coffee grounds. Yeah, I hear it. We're just going to use this rake handle to make our lines. So keeping the roots in the soil is good for the soil. It's not going to make it easy to plant garlic, but I'll work around it. These other three I'm going to try to save. I've got my neem oil soak in that bucket because I am going to eliminate as much of the soil from the peppers and then soak the roots in the neem oil water to kill off any other buggies that I don't want inside. Oh, well, that job took 10 times longer with all the mud having to be dealt with. Uh, okay, that's done. Now I'm going to do the same application of peat moss and perlite. I don't have any coffee grounds, so I'll do that later time on this two-thirds of this bed for the garlic. And actually, this bed is only two feet wide, so it's not going to hold nearly as much garlic as the first bed. But it's still more than we've ever planted. Well, I think that's all I'm going to do with the garlics today. I'll let this bed rest, let the squirrels or whatever scamper through it, mess it all up, which they always tend to do. And then I'll plant the garlic tomorrow. Um, I still have to deal with these peppers, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm about to pot up the peppers, and then I saw my lantana and figured I need to get this inside as well, so I'm going to do that too. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a lot of ants in there. So that's why we don't bring in outside pots. I'm going to rinse this out real good.
by wash out real good, I just mean make sure most of those bugs I can see are off of it. It's not going in the house. I am going to be putting the lantana in the green bucket, which is going in the house. That was already bug free from what I could tell. All right, let's plant up the peppers. I'm just using straight up peat moss for these. Now, two years ago when I did this, the root balls were considerably larger. But I did end up trimming them anyway because they were too big for the pot and the plant. So, we'll see. And I only filled this halfway because there's not really that much life to support. It's just to keep it going through the winter. Um, hmm. I was going to double up one of these. I did. Since the root system's not going much, I'm not putting that much soil or growing medium. This is peat moss, it's not soil. In here, just enough to keep it moist throughout the winter. And I'm also going to pepper this with diomatous earth make sure any leftover creepy crawlies have less of a chance. Oh, the lantana that's going inside has perlite in it. And I'll probably put some worm castings in this too. Because this is going to sit in the windowsill and continue to grow. Holy crap, I haven't done any marathon gardening in quite some time, and that was a doozy. And the rest of the season of fall is going to be a doozy with all the cleanup too. And speaking of cleanup, that's what I'm going to be doing, so I will talk to you all again soon. Bye!